It's kind of a rarity these days when a hotel's name truly does match the experience that you'll have inside. Hi there, my name is Kevin and I make honest and to the point narrated trip reports about flights and hotels all over the world. This is video number 122 at the Hotel Majestic in Barcelona, representing the 46th hotel brand featured on the channel. Stick around for the full tour and review. And welcome to Barcelona. Even if the Hotel Majestic wasn't a great hotel, it would still be a decent hotel simply for its location directly on one of the main boulevards in Barcelona, Paseo de Gracia. If you'd like to know the exact rate that I paid for my stay, please check out the description below. Before we get into the review, a quick riddle. What do flying pigs, vegan polar bears, and sponsored unbiased reviews have in common? Well, they don't exist. That's why this video is unsponsored and the Majestic Hotel hadn't a clue that I'd be visiting and therefore this video won't include any exclusive access, staged photo shoots, or VVIP treatment that the average guest couldn't experience for themselves, because that's not what I do. For sure though, this video will include honest commentary and candid video footage because this hotel stay is 100% self-funded. If you enjoy or appreciate or just barely tolerate authentic travel content, please consider giving this channel a sub and checking out my Maptastic Patreon in the description below. You all are the sponsors of this video, so a big thanks in advance for stopping by. As we walk through the hotel's reception area and towards the lobby bar, this 303-room slice of history deserves a few words about its past. Originally opened in 1918, the hotel was one of the very first upscale properties in Barcelona and represented a beacon of grandeur for the Catalonian state and a progressive showcase for a growing artistic community. During the Spanish Civil War, the Majestic Hotel acted somewhat in the same capacity as the Caravelle Hotel in Saigon, where war correspondents from all over the world gathered to watch and report on the war's daily progress. I'm filming these shots around 6 a.m., which may as well be 4 a.m. in Spain, but the lobby bar we're walking through now is open throughout the day and offers tapas and a little bit of everything else that you might be tempted by. After the war, and for decades to follow, the hotel was unofficially known as the Hotel of the Arts due to both the significant number of pieces on display, but also the artists and personalities who regularly visited, including Picasso, Hemingway, and Joan Miro, whose foundation continues to maintain a relationship with the hotel. In the 1990s, the hotel expanded with an adjoining building and in 1996 was the site of the Majestic Pact, where the central government essentially first acknowledged Catalonian nationalism as a legitimate driving force in the region. 2013 saw the completion of the hotel's most recent full renovation, though parts of the hotel are again under renovation in 2022. Let's quickly check out where we are. Barcelona is a surprisingly very easy city to navigate and is just a 20 minute ride from the airport or five to 10 minute ride from the main train station. Part of Majestic's allure is its prime location as I mentioned before, literally smack in the middle of the Eixample neighborhood and surrounded by every city site, all within walking distance. Up to the rooftop now for a bit of sun and our first glance at the outstanding views. In the distance, you can see Gaudí's Sagrada Familia. The rooftop serves as the location of La Dolce Vida, a lounge and tapas bar with an admittedly awkwardly placed pool smack in the middle of it. The menu is both exactly what you would expect and exciting enough to make you want to have a seat and perhaps try out the quote-unquote best olives in the world. Drinks are reasonably priced by Barcelona standards, which translates to gut-wrenchingly expensive in the rest of the world. But as they say, it's always a good time for vermouth. Alright, now that we're all liquored up, let's take a look at the room. 
there is no possible way that I'd be able to make the haphazard layout of the guest room floors make any sense, so I'm just going to take the long way around and confuse you on purpose. When you check in, just make sure that you pay attention to which elevators you're advised to take so that you don't have to take a very long walk every single time you go back to your room. For this stay, I booked a standard deluxe room but was upgraded to a privilege room on arrival since I booked with MX's fine hotels and resorts. I don't always point that out these days, pointing it out when I book with MX that is, but I'll point it out here to note that this is one of the very good ones that sees a lot of MX traffic, knows the Amex policies inside and out, and will surely take care of you. That being said, the rooms are the low point of the hotel. But it's a big but. Based on the condition and quality of the common areas of the hotel, I'm going to make a rare assumption that these will soon feel up to date after their recent renovations. The room itself has a great layout, but just suffers from two things. The all too common dated warm lighting, and just a general frumpiness that comes collectively from the room carpeting, slightly sagging furniture, and my personal favorite, the beige bed skirt. Honestly though, better lighting and just a new bed frame alone would make a world of difference in here. All of that said, the bed was comfortable, the linens high quality, and the outlets, switches, and ports plentiful. The closet area was split into two narrow wardrobes with a mini bar area in the middle, stocked with Nespresso capsules, premium teas, and plastic bottled water. Across from that is the bathroom. The design and quality of materials in here, I think, speaks a lot about the hotel itself. This bathroom is by no means brand new, but like most of the hotel's areas, is timeless enough that whether it was from the 60s or last year, it does feel up to date in an old school way. The in-bathroom amenities were by a French brand named Atelier Cologne, and were nice, but very, very, very strongly scented in the distinct direction of musk and Old Spice. After my rooftop tapa session for a late lunch, I just wanted something small for dinner, so I ordered room service, specifically the pibil tacos, which I wouldn't say were authentic, but certainly did hit the spot. Served with a salad on the side, since the server, who took my order, over the phone, insisted that these tacos were not a complete meal. Which in a weird way, kinda sums up the service here, which I'll explain as we take a look at the Sulk restaurant, where a very, very good buffet was served for breakfast, albeit in a slightly strange indoor, outdoor, but not really outdoor space. So the service here, I don't know how to make this sound not weird, but it's discreetly aggressive. It's a style from decades ago, which was surprisingly refreshing in the age of even the most psychotic customers always being right. How do I explain this? Imagine that like in all hotels, there are rules and limits to what a guest can do, where they can go, what they're going to experience. But here, all of those rules can be bent by the staff when they see fit in their attempt to anticipate your needs. It could be something as small as a side salad on the house, a drink to apologize for the room not being ready even though you were early, 
or maybe a fantastic table during prime hours just because they're professional servers and they know they'll always find a way to make everyone happy. It's all small things, but put together makes for a very well choreographed but natural experience. The buffet itself, in a house of mirrors it seems, was a beautiful spread which was both distinctly Spanish and able to please everyone with a combination of cold dishes, supplemented by an a la carte main dish menu. There was also a small fitness center, but in lieu of showing that, I'm going to give you a brief demonstration of why I gave that dated room the benefit of the doubt. Because every single surface, sculpture, and piece of furniture in this hotel, in its common areas, is pristine. Personally, I think that when you see the care and attention to detail that goes into the common areas of this hotel, it's a reasonable assumption that all of the rooms will feel well up to date, likely this year. As we head into the flip-flop score, what are we thinking? I really enjoyed it here. If it wasn't for the things that I've mentioned about the room, this would easily be scoring in the mid-90s. But even with the dated rooms, I still think it's worth a look, especially considering it's typically priced on the very low end of comparable five-star properties. I really hope that you did enjoy this tour today, and will give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss a beat. Join me next time for my vueling flight to Ibiza.